Hi, and welcome to another presentation from Your Business Tutor. Learning your way, anytime, anywhere. We found out in the previous presentation that stakeholders' interests can conflict and that this can cause disruption to a business's activities, resulting in sales and profits falling. However, although stakeholders' interests can conflict, they can also complement each other. And this idea of stakeholders' interests complementing each other is what we will look at now by investigating stakeholder interdependence. So what will we learn in today's presentation? Well, first of all, we'll find out what stakeholder interdependence is. And then after that, we'll explore how stakeholders' interests are interdependent. So what is stakeholder interdependence? Stakeholder interdependence occurs when the interests of different stakeholders complement each other. In other words, the actions of each stakeholder helps the other achieve their interests. By cooperating with each other or working together, each stakeholder will achieve what they are interested in obtaining from the business. This is most likely to occur when one stakeholder wants to achieve something and needs the help of another stakeholder to do this. As such, successful cooperation usually occurs when one stakeholder can offer or incentivize the other to do what they want. So how can stakeholder interdependence occur? As with stakeholder conflict, probably the best way to look at stakeholder interdependence is by looking at some examples. The first one we'll look at is between suppliers and managers. As we know, suppliers are interested in a business ordering inventory from them. To ensure this happens, and hopefully so the business orders even more, a supplier may offer a discount for buying inventory in bulk. This would appeal to managers, as the business would be able to obtain inventory at a lower cost, which would help the business increase its profits. This, of course, would help the manager demonstrate they are doing a good job, which would improve their chances of job security and a pay rise. A second example of stakeholder interdependence is when directors decide to spend money on improving the product they sell or the service they provide to make the business more competitive. This would appeal to customers as improved products and better service is exactly what they're after for the money they spend. Directors would also be happy as the business would be gaining customers from competitors and positive word of mouth would be spread about the business. This would indicate that they're doing a good job and would give them more job security and a better chance of a pay rise. A third example of stakeholder interdependence is between managers, the local community and pressure groups. As we have seen over the last few years, there's been an increased interest in businesses being environmentally aware. Pressure groups and members of the local community have raised the profile of this issue, especially the excessive use of plastic packaging. As a reaction to this, managers in many businesses have taken steps to reduce plastic packaging. This obviously appeals to pressure groups in the local community because they are getting what they want. However, it also makes sense from a business perspective because using less packaging reduces costs, but also being more environmentally friendly can be used as a marketing tool to attract more customers to the business. Employees and customers are also interdependent. For example, many employees and businesses are paid by commission. The more they sell, the more they're paid. As such, if employees provide excellent service, more customers will be attracted to the business because they are getting what they want. This means employees will sell more and as a consequence will be paid more, which is what they want. Along the same lines, 
Employees and shareholders can also be interdependent. For example, shareholders may agree at an annual general meeting, AGM, to approve an employee profit share scheme. This is a scheme where if the business makes a certain amount of profit, employees receive a proportion of that profit which increases their pay. Shareholders may do this because they believe it will incentivise employees to work harder and provide a better service. This will attract more customers to shop in the business, which will increase sales and profits. Both shareholders and employees will be happy with this because rising profits means shareholders will receive a larger dividend and employees will receive higher pay in the form of profit share. Another example of stakeholder interdependence is between suppliers and customers. This occurs because suppliers will want a business to continue to order inventory from them. To ensure this happens, they will need their product to be popular with customers. As such, there is an incentive for a supplier to provide great products that are modern and full of features. Customers will appreciate this as they will want the best products and so will purchase these products the supplier provides. The business will see that customers like the supplier's products and thus will continue to order stock from them and may in fact increase their order. A final example of stakeholder interdependence is between directors and the government. Many national governments encourage multinational organisations to set up in their country in order to create jobs. They can do this by offering grants or lower tax rates. This encourages directors to move production to these countries as a grant reduces the cost of setting up a new factory and a lower tax rate means higher profits for shareholders. As can be seen, by creating a positive business environment, governments can attract businesses to set up in their country and create jobs. So what did we learn in today's presentation? Well, first of all, we identified what stakeholder interdependence is. And then after that, we explored how stakeholders' interests are interdependent. As you have probably worked out from the examples we've looked at, Stakeholder interdependence can have a powerful influence on stakeholders successfully achieving their interests. This is because when stakeholders cooperate or work together for an outcome that is positive to both, they will be far more powerful. Each stakeholder can bring their own ability to influence and impact a business to get what they want. However, what we also have to remember is that stakeholder conflict and interdependence are not exclusive of each other. By this it is meant that while two stakeholders are working cooperatively with each other for a certain outcome, there may also be another stakeholder who is in conflict with that outcome. In fact, there may be a number of other stakeholders who are in conflict with the desired outcome and then decide to work together cooperatively to oppose it. That's when being a manager gets really interesting. As your management of that situation and the opposing interests of groups of stakeholders could very much determine the future success of your business.